Benz is here. Woo! Did it start? Oh, you didn't try it, right? Allegedly, this is supposed to start. It's not as nice as I thought it was going to be, but it's not terrible either, considering this was another sight unseen purchase. So, they said this one ran and drove. Definitely an original car. Probably an older person's. It's got all the keys and everything. Actually, I actually have the title. Let me see when they bought this car. Wow. 2001. So someone's owned this for a while. So this is interesting. In 2001, it had 121,000 miles. See, now it's got 123. Maybe the odometer stopped spinning. A bit actual, but again, it hasn't been retitled in so many years. It might actually not work. Either this thing hasn't been driven at all in almost 20 years, or it has been driven and used and uh, the odometer just stopped working, which is very typical in these cars. The odometers stop working. Which key is this thing gonna take? They're all fighting me. Okay, got a key. Aha, it runs! Actually, I don't see any smoke or anything weird. It has no coolant in it, so I don't want to run it too long. Which is not an ideal sign that there's no coolant. I don't know if that means that there's a leak or what. Alright, well it goes in the gear. It takes a second, but it goes, which is common with these. Let's just see what happens to get for a quick, quick, quick lot drive. It shifts about how it should. I can't see anything, I'm sure you can tell. Literally nothing. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Let's turn this thing around before I crash. Ooh, wow, that transmission's shifting harsh. Harsh, harsh, harsh. Very harsh. It, it runs and dries, but it shifts kind of hard. First drive would be Mercedes here, trying to get it home. It shifts very, very harshly into second or third gear, which I'm not a fan of. These are, it's normal for these to have hard shifts, but this is like a whole new level of harsh. Um, but the only way I'm gonna find out what's wrong with it is by driving it home. It has fluid, so maybe the vacuum actuator or adjuster thing in this just really needs to be adjusted. It was out of gas, I just put some gas in it quick. But this is, uh, I'm not sure what to think. I think this might be, everything is completely German in this car. There's no English. If you look at this shit in the back, 
This to me looks like it's from a European model. All right, I know you can't see much, but now I'm taking the Euro Bend. So my buddy Alex with his Focus ST down to the car wash. It's basically almost two in the morning. Another thing I remembered about these Euro Mercedes that I don't know how I forgot it because it's one of the most favored features about it is the Euro bumpers, which are, there's that transmission. Be much skinnier without the big bumper pads, not to the US safety specs. So that's another thing this vehicle has, further proving that it's definitely a Euro car. Again, there's no doubt in my mind, it's got the tags for the importing and everything like that. There's a tag as well in the engine bay saying that it was imported and shit like that. So, so I ran out earlier and I got some coolant for this thing, topped it off, and now the low coolant light is off and it doesn't overheat anymore. Alex and I drove it around for a good 20 minutes to, to ensure that it was a problem and sure enough, uh, as you would expect, once coolant was in it, now it's not overheating. Anyway, we're almost at the car wash now. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this thing turns out. Again, it's two in the morning and I couldn't even sleep without bringing it down just to see. So I'll show you when I get there before and after. So Alex is washing his ST. If he wants to do a video on it and you guys want to see a video on it, we'll do one. But in the meantime, I want to direct your attention to the after on the Euro Benz. Check it out. What a difference. I can't get over how nicely this car cleaned up. It was just covered in so much dirt from whoever knows how long this car had been sitting before it went to auction. Now remember, this is a charity donation vehicle. So if I had to guess, the owner probably passed away or became too old to drive and someone in the family, which actually I have the title and the wife had signed it over on behalf of the husband. So probably no longer driving it, been sitting for a long time. Look at how well this car cleaned up. That's the beauty of these old bank fault Benzes. They have the best paint jobs. They can withstand years of sitting neglected. And this car, this is just a power wash. Imagine if I buffed it and compounded it and waxed it, it would look even better. Get that small gash out of the door over there. These small little rust spots, very easy to fix. The doors on the passenger side have these bigger rot holes. So I'm assuming this door is pretty much exactly the same as a US model door. So maybe I'll just get different white doors instead of trying to fix all these little spots, but we'll see. I have a good body guy now. I know he would do all this shit pretty cheap have this thing looking brand spanking new. It's just a matter of how much it'll cost me to get this thing sorted out mechanically. Again, hopefully that transmission is salvageable, we'll see. Or again, even if it needs some work, as long as I'm not gonna get killed on the rebuild or whatever it needs done. And as for the engine, again, hopefully it doesn't need a head gasket. Hopefully it's just a minor couple of things in that motor. 
It seems to be running better and better as I drive it. Even the transmission starts to shift a little bit better the more I'm driving it. So it could just be from this vehicle sitting for so long. We'll see. But again, I'm blown away at how nice this thing cleaned up. All right, so I quickly want to touch on a few things about this car that I left out in the video. So first off, if you don't know what a gray market car is, long story short, it's a car that was originally built for the roads in Europe, and then somebody came from the United States over to Germany, went to Mercedes, bought this car, and imported it back to the United States before it became illegal. So these cars are kind of like a unicorn thing. You don't find them too often. And when I saw this car on the auction list, I didn't even realize at the time what it was. Now I'm very familiar with these older Mercedes, the bank vault Mercedes, because I grew up around them. My family always bought these cars from the day I was born. And these old Mercedes got me into cars. So when I saw this thing pop up at the auction, now again, it's not a 190E, but it's a very close cousin to the 190E. Took a quick look at it. I didn't even notice it was a gray market car. And there's a lot of visual cues on the outside that give that away. But the pictures are very shitty. It was stuffed in the auction lot with a bunch of other cars around it. You could barely see it. But the listing said it was an 87 300E. It was a charity donation car. It also said the car ran and drove. So I'm looking at it, I go, geez, you know what? I love these cars. If I don't keep it for myself, it'd be a quick flip, not for much money, probably anywhere from 1,500 to three grand, depending on how good this thing cleans up and if there's anything wrong with it. This was car number four came up on the list and nobody bids on it. The minimum bid was 250. There was about a thousand people in that online auction at that moment. I threw in the minimum bid, nobody else bid. So I won the car. So with the auction fees and shipping to my door, the grand total on this car was 500 bucks. Get the car. I still didn't realize what it was yet, that it was a gray market car, but I started to notice some cues that I was looking over the car, but especially when I got to the gas station. Now, when I looked at this car, I forgot to say this. I was looking at the listing before it went up on auction. I did notice this. This is a very European thing. A lot of the European W124s have this between the taillights. And I thought, okay, well, that is a Euro feature, but somebody probably just put that on the car here in the US. It's a US model. Even though right here screaming at you are Euro bumpers, because the US bumpers have these big black bumper pads. So I guess it's a good time now to talk about what makes this car different from a US model. First of all, as I just said, the bumpers usually have bigger black bumper pads on them. So the front bumper is different as well, and it's got the wider plate insert area for obviously a European plate. The headlights are also different, the Bosch headlights and the fog light area here. You don't have the little wipers that the US models had. Here on the cruise control lever, it's in German. But the big giveaway, the real way to tell if one of these cars is a gray market car is here in the Vintag because A, the Vintag isn't up here in the dashboard where it'd be on a US car. It's here in the door jam and it will say right on here, right here, who imported the car to the United States. Here's the person who originally imported it. Interesting name, definitely a European guy. But he imported it here to Miami in 88, and then someone else bought this car off him in 2001, had it all those years, and I got it off them through the auction when they donated it to charity. So it's a two owner car, me being the third. It has a red cloth interior. And one thing that's very, very rare in the W124 chassis is heated seats. Now the bigger 560 sedans had this more commonly, but even still, not a very popular option, hard to find. But in the W124 chassis, this is extremely hard to find. So the heated cloth seats, or just heated seats in general in the smaller E-chassis car is a very hard find. You combine that with the cloth seats, and this car is very, very unique, especially here in the United States. So unfortunately, I can't open the hood because my truck's too close. But over here, there's also another tag that says imported by with the same name and all the information, the VIN number, everything in German. 
everything in the radiator is in German, everything in here is in German, which even on the US models, there was a lot of stuff in German, but in this car, it really is everything in German. Another cool thing I found in here was this bag from Germany. And it looks to be about as old as the car. I wonder if this was left in here when it was imported. So very cool find. It was sitting right in the trunk with all this older person stuff. This is also their cue that the car is a European model. Uh, the European cars had this thing here stuck to the trunk for if you break down the side of the road. The US models did not. And you can see even right here, this is all in German. So there's no doubt in anybody's mind this is a true gray market car. Even the VIN number says so. Everything about this car says that it's a gray market car. And also the gray market cars didn't have all the US emissions bullshit. I do plan on fixing everything on it in time. Worst case scenario needs a head gasket and a transmission rebuild. Best case scenario, a little bit of a vacuum adjustment, the transmission and a valve cover leak and maybe some other minor things on the engine to get this thing running and driving 100%. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions about the car, anything that I left out, leave it down in the comments. Give it a like if you like it. If you don't like it, give it that dislike and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.